leal hasta la muerte. Hermanos, hermanas, siempre habrá mártires entre nosotros. Es la señal de que vamos por el camino correcto. Una persona que sabe me decía que hay más mártires hoy que al inicio del cristianismo. El coraje de los mártires, el testimonio de los mártires es una bendición para todos. Oremos para que quienes en diversas partes del mundo arriesgan su vida por el Evangelio, contagen a la Iglesia su valentía, su impulso misionero. Y abiertos a la gracia del martirio. Two Testaments. A testament is an old English word meaning covenant. To get two testaments as your skiza tune, send skiza followed by code 7389971 and send it to 811. Two Testaments. The opportunity to thank the Almighty God for such an opportunity to express ourselves. Pray for us. We need your prayers. Yeah. That who we are and who God is. At home, we used to pray every day. If you want to pray for something, you go and pray and then you will receive and then you will come back. A very good morning, dear viewer. How have you been? Tumsifi Yesu Christu. Welcome again to our program, Missions of Hope, with our sister Esther Muturi. And today, we are blessed to have men of God who are going to tell us who they are, what they do in their quest to serve the society and to bring hope. And before we do that, we are going to read a Bible verse from Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen. Welcome brothers in the studio. And I, I request brothers to begin off with a word of prayer. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, we come unto you this morning. We glorify you for the gift of life. As we begin this show, may you be with us, inspire us with your Holy Spirit. May you make us instruments of your word as we reach out to the most abandoned in our communities. May you lead us all the way until the end. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome to Captain Studio. I don't know whether it's your first time. Okay. Yes, okay, so this is Captain Studio and welcome. Tell us your names and which is this congregation in the studio today? Karibu. Thank you, sister. Mm -hmm. My names are Brother Stephen Makori Mose. Mm -hmm. O plate of male immaculate. Okay, Karibu. Thank you. Brother Stephen in the studio. 
And uh, my name is Father Cosmas Kedenji, a missionary of Breath of Mary Margaret. Thank you, Father Kedenji, in the studio. Kedenji, Kedenji. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Makore from which diocese? Uh, my home diocese is Kisi Diocese. Kisi Diocese. Yes. But we can see to Koko Dani and uh, <laughs> I'm from Meru Diocese. Meru Diocese, what yeah. were Meru to Kondani. So, welcome to our show today. And uh, this program focuses on different religious groups and uh, what we do. And we try to showcase the richness of the Catholic Church that we are so many but carrying. Uh, duties or apostolates that bring hope to the society. But before we go to that, maybe we would like to know who are the missionary oblates of Mary Immaculate, Brother Stephen. Uh, the missionary oblate of Mary Immaculate is a, a religious congregation of both men, uh, brothers, and priests. Mm -hmm. We are founded uh, as a Congregation for a Pontifical Right. We were founded uh, in 1816 okay. in France. Then from then it has spread all over the world mm -hmm. up to Kenya now where we are. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The, the person who started your congregation is uh, who? Our founder is uh, called Eugene de Masinot, St. Eugene de Masinot. Okay. Yes. From France. From France. And he started the congregation because he saw a need, what we normally call the charism. Maybe Father Cosmas, okay. what is the charism that guide your congregation? Yeah, uh, our founders saw a need and uh, it was uh, around the time of the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, there were a lot of difficulties in France. Mm -hmm. And mostly there are people who are not being reached because of, uh, by the church because of the French Revolution. Yeah. And, uh, that's, uh, and those groups were the domestic servants, mm -hmm. the prisoners, and the youth. Mm -hmm. So our founder felt that these people were abandoned. Mm -hmm. And so he, he sought to give his life uh, to reach out to them. Mm -hmm so that he could be of help to them, so that they, through him the church could re reach them, so that they could hear the good news. Yeah. Uh, like the domestic servants, for them they would be just be serving their masters, they didn't have time to, 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 to go to church and all that, mm -hmm. but he organized special services for them. Uh, and he would go very early in the morning to reach out to them and be with them. Uh, so our charism is to reach uh, to the most abandoned. Okay. At the first, our founder started alone. And then uh, as time went on, he realized the work was so much, mm -hmm. he could not do it alone. Mm -hmm. And then he tried to call other priests who would share in his vision, who, who saw that there was a need mm -hmm. for these people to be attended to. Mm -hmm. And that's how uh, they enjoyed him. And as we were told in 1816, they began living together mm -hmm. uh, to serve these people who are most abandoned, mm -hmm. who are not getting um, attention that they required uh, from the church. Okay. Yeah. I, from your name, Missionaries yeah. Oblates of Mary Immaculate, I would have expected maybe to see you with some rosaries and what, but I'm seeing you with the crucifix and the... And the, is it called the belt? Ours is called the cord. Sash. Sash, yeah. yeah. Maybe, Brother Stephen, could you explain a bit about that, your dress code and what have you? Now, what mm. is this thing to us? As oplate of Mary Immaculate yeah. is our oplate cross. Mm -hmm. And the oplate cross that we oplate... Maybe you can hold it a bit, yeah. The oplate so cross yeah. as oplates which we wear, yeah. it is very distinct to us uh, as oplates. It uh, came on uh, 1816 when our founder uh, began the congregation. Mm -hmm. uh, the experience he had on uh, Good Friday, mm -hmm. and when he was looking at the cross, he got inspired. And this one becomes very distinct to us as operates. Mm -hmm. When we make our final vows, an operate of Mary Immaculate is given this cross mm -hmm. as a sign 
of his fidelity to the congregation and to the church. Mm -hmm. Now, those ones of us uh, in formation, before they get vine of ours, they don't receive this operate cross. Okay. So once you receive this one, you now done you have done your final of ours, and this one identifies you as an operate. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Maybe the, the, the viewer also is getting to understand the missionary oblates of Mary Immaculate. Father Cosmas, what distinguishes a, a priest, an oblate priest, and an oblate, oblate brother? Uh, we, we belong to the same family, yeah. the priest and the brothers. Mm -hmm. And uh, like myself, I'm a, I'm a priest. Mm -hmm. Brother Steve, right now we call him a, a brother, mm -hmm. but he is the way, he is moving towards ordination. Okay, okay. But uh, we have them brother. We have people who decided to be brothers for life. Okay. They are not ordained, mm -hmm. but we are all members of the congregation, mm -hmm. and uh, we all participate in the mission of the congregation. Mm -hmm. Now, some of us serve the congregation as priests and then others they leave their their vocation in the congregation as brothers mm -hmm. but um, our uh, our commitment in the congregation is not different okay. we are just one we are carrying out one ministry of the congregation and it's complementary mm -hmm. uh, so when we live our life in the community we are all members of the community we all minister to those people who are most abandoned. Mm -hmm. and now, only that a priest has a like if we are living in a parish or in a community, the responsibility for, for the sacraments. Mm -hmm. eh? But we are all members of the same congregation. Okay. Yeah. Is it the grade that distinguish who is to be a brother, who is to be a priest, or is personal choice? Uh, it's the uh, personal choice of the person. Mm -hmm. The grain is actually the same mm -hmm. for all of us, okay. for the priests and the brothers. Okay. And uh, the formation, we, we undergo the, the same formation, all of us. Mm -hmm. So as the person enters, enters the congregation, you decide if you want to be a priest, if you want to, uh, to be a brother. Mm -hmm. And then um, you make your commitment and you serve the congregation as a brother or as a priest. So the entering grade is the same for all of us. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Father Cosmas. Uh, Brother Stephen, uh, when did uh, your congregation come to Kenya and which part of Kenya are you found? Uh, our congregation came to Kenya uh, not a long time ago, mm -hmm. almost 30 years ago, 1997, okay. uh, through the invitation of uh, the late Bishop Njiru. Okay. in Meru Diocese. Mm -hmm. So I uh, will say in Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, we first of all arrived here in Meru. Okay. And now from Meru, we have spread to Nakuru, mm -hmm. and now here we are in Nairobi, mm -hmm. and Ngong Diocese. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Good to know. Father Cosmas, before you joined, there were so many other congregations. <laughs> 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 and you decided to be a missionary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is your vocation journey to the point that you decided I want to join the missionary of, uh, of Ima Mary Immaculate? Yeah. Yeah, it's true there are many congregations mm -hmm. and uh, myself I was born in Meru in a parish called Kerua. That's where I come from. Mm -hmm. It's served by the apostles of Jesus. They are missionaries. Mm -hmm. And they are the people I grew up seeing, those the apostles of Jesus. And of course, there was some a congregation for the sisters around, yeah. the little sisters of St. Therese. They had uh, uh, some missionary sisters there, mm -hmm. the Franciscan Christ. Mm -hmm. I could see them as missionaries there. Eh? Mm -hmm. So as I grew up, I used to see the, the priests who are ministering in, in my parish. And... Uh, the thing that inspired me as a child was the water servers. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just wanted to be an altar server. I used mm -hmm. to think they were the, the small priest. Yes. Eh? <laughs> and then eventually when I got into class six, I got an, an opportunity to be an altar server. Mm -hmm. And then I was close to the priest. Mm -hmm. I would serve at mass, accompany them when they went to the outstations. Mm -hmm accompany them when they went to visit uh, the sick uh, for the funerals and all that and i really loved what they were doing eh? mm -hmm. and uh, 
deep within I felt I, I wanted to be a priest. I wanted to be a missionary like these missionaries that I, that I was seeing. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the days as we, we went with one of the brothers, he belonged to the apostles of Jesus, uh, to, to one of the outstations for the communion service. Mm -hmm. I remember he told, me, he told me, together with the other altar servers, this work we are doing, we need some more people to join us. Uh, we need some more people to join us. Yeah. Hold it on because we <laughs> shall continue after the break. Do not go away. The conversation continues. We are getting into deep to understand who are the missionary oblates of Mary Margaret and the year well represented by Father Cosmos and Stephen, our brother Stephen, do not go away. Keep it Caption TV. Captain TV, your Catholic identity, and today the opportunity to thank the Almighty God for such an opportunity to express ourselves. Pray for us. We need your prayers. Yeah. That who we are and who God. At home, we used to pray every day. If you want to pray for something, you go and pray, and then you will receive, and then you will come back. Kitubio au upatanisho Sakramenti ya kitubio ndiyo sakramenti ya kuondolea o watu thambi walizotenda baada ya ubatizo Sakramenti ya kitubio pia huitwa sakramenti ya upatanisho ipo katika fungu la sakramenti za uponyaji Kuna sakramenti mbili za uponyaji, kitubio na mpako mtakatifu wa wagonjwa. Dhumuni haswa la sakramenti ya uponyaji ni kuzirejeshea uhai roho zetu pale zinapogua kwa kutenda thambi. Yesu ndiye tabibu mkuu wa roho zetu naye yu tayari kututibu kila tunapougua. Kupata kitubio kama sikiza tuni yako Tuma neno sikiza likifuatwa na nambari 738102073 kwa nane moja moja. Captain TV, your Catholic identity, and today... The opportunity to thank the Almighty God for such an opportunity to express ourselves. Pray for us. We need your prayers. Yeah. That who we are and who God... At home, we used to pray every day. If you want to pray for something, you go and pray, and then you will receive, and then you will come back. Welcome back, dear viewer. Father Cosmos was telling us about his vocation journey, and I don't want to take more time. I want us to continue hearing how did this young boy decide that he wants to be a priest, and specifically missionary oblates of the Immaculate, Mary Immaculate. <laughs> Father yeah. Cosmos, brother told you there is a need of more people. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is what he told me together with the other altar servers mm -hmm. as we went for the communion service on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, he told us, he gave us the invitation, think about it, mm -hmm. you can be one of us. Yeah. And I kept that at heart. When I reached class 8, we, I had completed my KCP, mm -hmm. waiting for the results. Mm -hmm. And I remember that time there was a celebration in my parish. It was the opening of the convent of the Franciscan Crales mm -hmm. sisters eh? mm -hmm. uh, there in Kirwa. And uh, I met our catechist and uh, I remember he asked me, did you complete class 8? I told him yes. Mm -hmm. Then he told me, 
you have to talk with father, you go to the minor seminary. Okay. And then I, I took it seriously. I went to talk to the to our parish priest. I told him that I wanted to go to the minor seminary, mm -hmm. uh, the minor seminary in Merwe. It's called mm -hmm. St. Pius. Okay. I talked with father, he invited one of my parents. I went with mom there, we talked, he explained what the minor seminary was. Uh, I did the interview for the minor seminary and I was invited to go to the minor seminary. At the minor seminary, I was able to do the high school education and then to, to undergo some formation. Eh? Mm -hmm. We used to have uh, uh, prayers in the morning, at midday, in the evening, at night. Mm -hmm. And every month we used to have a, a, a recollection, a prayer and day. And during the prayer days, they would invite different priests from different dioceses. They would invite missionaries to, to come and talk to us about vocations, different, uh, uh, different topics of our faith. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, within that, I was able to grow my vocation, to know the distinction now between the missionaries and the diocesan priests. Mm -hmm. And one of the priests who was invited to, to come to us was uh, the vocation promoter of the missionary operates of Mary Immaculate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to, to talk to, to, uh, to him and he invited me to go for come and see mm -hmm. uh, when I was in Form 3. Okay. So I went for come and see, that is the time you go and uh, stay with the missionaries in one of the communities. I went to the formation house. I saw the uh, four, uh, five brothers who were there undergoing their formation, and then they end uh, three formators. I, I really loved the community life, mm -hmm. uh, the way they were living together, uh, sharing, being together at meals. And then I loved the prayer life. They would go, uh, uh, we would go together with them in the chapel, and we ended go uh, and to go with them uh, for their pastor uh, to the slums in Mer they are called Shauliako. Eh? Mm -hmm. And after the one week, I loved, <laughs> I really loved what they were doing, what mm -hmm. they were about. Eh? Okay. And from then, uh, the vocation director invited me to be in touch with the missionary obrits of Mary Margaret. Mm -hmm. When I completed uh, Form 4, I still had the, the desire to join them. I used to visit them frequently. Mm -hmm. And then uh, our, ex our results came out on a Wednesday, I remember mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. I took the results to him on a Friday. Mm -hmm. Then he invited me and joined the congregation on the following Monday. Wow. That was back in 2006. And that is what happened. Yeah, that is what happened. <laughs> we thank God. Here you are representing <laughs> them at Captain's TV. Congratulations for coming this far. Yeah, thank May you. God continue blessing you. Brother uh, Stephen, before, before I ask, uh, is, is your congregation partly, I uh, mean, co what is it called? Conte contemplative or we are active? We are active. Okay, thank you. So, you too, you have your journey. Yes. How is it? Uh, like how, how was it, rather? Very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Like many of us, mm -hmm. each and everyone has his journey. Mm. My vocation journey began a long time. Mm -hmm. When I was a young boy, I remember I accompanied my grandfather to the parish. We, uh, our out station is uh, quite a distance from my home parish. As mm -hmm. I indicated, I'm, I come from Kisi Diocese. Mm -hmm a parish called Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary, Sengera Parish, mm -hmm. almost 15 kilometers away from home. Okay. So we, I accompanied my grandfather then to the parish for parish mass. Reaching there as a young boy, I saw, uh, I, then I could not know they were altar servers, mm -hmm. but I saw uh, young boys of my age wearing good clothes, eh? <laughs> These uh, different yeah, colors. Like yes, yeah, so I was interested to uh, who are these. Mm -hmm. So curiously, I asked my grandfather, mm -hmm. "Can I can I go there and also wear those clothes?" So he looked at me, just laughed. Mm -hmm. He never told me anything. He waited until the mass ended, and then he held my hand. He took me to the priest. Mm -hmm. Then I never knew it was a vocation director of the diocese. Then, so he just introduced me to him. He told me, "I am giving you this boy." He want to be like you. Mm -hmm. So the priest told me, okay, go home. On Saturday, I want to, you come and see me on a Saturday. And I asked myself, on a Saturday, to go and see the priest. So I went on a Saturday, very early in the morning, knocking at his door. 
So I was told, okay, go to the main parish there, church, there are young uh, boys like you, mm -hmm. join them. Okay. So we were Just collecting, like yes, <laughs> collecting okay. litter around the compound. Mm -hmm. and then later I was introduced, it was a vocation group. Okay. Now this group in the, our parish, and I think in our diocese we have a vocation group, Mm -hmm. Majorly is mm -hmm. where we have guys descending to be riches, mm -hmm. either uh, sisters, brothers, or uh, brother uh, priest. Okay. So I grew up in this vocation group mm -hmm. for a while. Is where also I came to uh, know about difference between religious and decisions. Mm -hmm. So when uh, I grew up in this uh, group, I became an altar server. Now, when I was finishing, I finished my primary school, went to high school, still in the same group. Mm -hmm. and then I had no idea about the oplet, mm -hmm. but we had richer sisters from our parish, uh, mostly the decisions who will mm -hmm. come and give us the talks yeah. during holidays, during the long holidays. So it was in that time of discernment, I had classmates, mm -hmm. many of them, mm -hmm. we were aspiring to be like a, uh, one of the priests around in the diocese. Mm -hmm. But... You know, God calls us differently. Yeah. So after high school, some had applied to different congregations. They joined. Myself, our, as I indicated, our parish is our lead of the most holy rosary. Yeah. So uh, I read in this, uh, there's a book called Book of Courage then, which was in the parish. Mm -hmm. We were given to just uh, look at the congregations. So I went through it, there is this name, missional Oplet of Mary Immaculate. I think it resonates well with the, the name of our parish. Yeah. <laughs> so I wrote an application. The response, it didn't come as I expected. Mm -hmm. So it took time. Later, you know, my colleagues, you know, they had gotten responses, they have gone to seminars. Yeah. You know, when you are also in that period of discernment, mm -hmm. should I go and be richer? Oh, or I go to university or diocese mm -hmm. and all those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in that period of discernment, uh, I was invited to uh, come and see mm -hmm. uh, with uh, our former vocation director to Meru. Mm -hmm. I went there. And actually, even before going there, the one who introduced me more deeper to the congregation is one of my friends. Okay. He went to the same vocation group. Mm. He told me, you know, there is this uh, mission and of Mary Immaculate. Mm -hmm. Can you, are you interested with this one? You know, we can call it cosy cosy in a way. <laughs> You're not very sure. Yeah. So when I wrote to them, I was invited to come and see. And then went back home. And instead of now coming back again to discern more, mm -hmm. it took time in a way. I was also discerning, should I go there or I should not go? Mm. No, in that time, I was uh, advised by my, my cousins, my uncles, ah, you, you go to college, yeah. you study, if you mm. are interested to come and change this religious life, you can come later. Mm. No, and now we went to a, a workshop. I think it was the climax for joining, no? That mm. workshop. So after the workshop, we were admitted to begin our formation program the following year. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, just going home, I thought about it. Ah, no. I went to college. Mm -hmm. the, uh, one of the priests was coming for a come and come to visiting homes mm -hmm. where we come from. I told him, no, sorry, I've gone to college. I will come. I will be in touch. I will come later. Okay. So I finished my college studies. Mm -hmm. and then from there, I came back I, because I was in touch with the oplates. Mm -hmm. And then I joined the oplates. Okay. Up and to now. You and here I am. <laughs> you cannot run away. Look at God. <laughs> Whatever you say, you will be up or up. I saw one time in, on Facebook. While Kwa now is our Malta boys, one and other, up in your house. Those who ask, they are here, and many others are doing very well. <laughs> they, they were saying, our Alta boys have sat so many. Where do they go? Some of them are here, so you can hear. Uh, there are those who are following us Miriam Juguna, uh, Rogaya Bitok, uh, Nico Chalo. Allah, congrats to those brothers from OMI. I attended their ordination at St. Joseph the Waka Lamudiak Nakuru. Let them greet their vocational director, Father Faustin Litanda. 
<laughs> Father Faustin, I hope you are watching or you will watch later. You are <laughs> greeted by Nico Chalo. I think he works with Radio Amani Nakuru. Father Cosmas, uh, the, this program is about missions of hope. And uh, when we talk missions of hope, there are those apostolates or whatever we are doing uh, to, to change the situations in which people that we serve are in. And uh, you have continuously said that the intention and uh, the reason why your founder, Eugene, started your congregation was to alleviate poverty or to, to deal with those people who are poor. Mm. What does your congregation do, maybe the missions you are carrying out, either in Kenya or wherever you are? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, we, we reach to the poor, we reach uh, to the most abandoned. And uh, the first aspect of the poverty that we deal with is the spiritual of poverty, mm -hmm. the people who are poor spiritually, the people who thirst for gold, mm -hmm. uh, the people who want um, to, to be taught their faith, mm -hmm. to be maintained, sustained in their faith. The people who have never heard about God, yeah. like we start um, the, the, the church or introduce them to the faith mm -hmm. and do the first evangelization. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, usually when we talk about the, the spiritual poverty, most of the times there is an aspect of hope that the people need to be given. Sure. Like you can imagine a person who has a thirst to know about God. Yeah. A person who has been somewhere and just... Um, <laughs> wanting to be in touch with a priest who can teach him mm. about God, mm. uh, with a missionary who can teach him about God. Eh? Yeah. So we go to those people, introduce them to their faith, and uh, because some of those are materially poor, or they are undergoing uh, some other situations in their life, we try uh, mm. to, 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 uh, to show them that uh, there is a future for them, mm -hmm. they can still move on. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when we go to the to the parishes, we try and see what uh, what people are, are struggling with, mm -hmm. and uh, some of uh, some uh, some of the times it's just to be reached on the ground mm -hmm. uh, to have a priest to have a missionary there. So we go and do that, eh? mm -hmm. and we try and uh, work with everyone within the parish community that we are working uh, we are working with. And then the other times we try and uh, look what is the need of the community. Like when we first came in Kenya, we went to a parish in Meru. Mm -hmm. It's called Kionyo. Mm -hmm. And uh, the missionaries who first went there, uh, they saw that there was a need in the community and it was a need for education. Mm -hmm. Those days there were no day schools. Mm -hmm. Not every parent was able to take their children to a boarding school mm -hmm. and some would um, go to boarding schools, they would not be sustained. Eh? Yeah. So the people really longed for the education. And the missionaries thought of um, uh, collaborating with the, with the community there. And they started mm -hmm. a, a first day school in the area. It's called a, a St. Eugene a mixed in day school. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, many students were able to pass through the school, got a good education, and, uh, and got the, the spiritual formation that they needed. Mm -hmm. And then we saw there was another need in the community. It was the water. Eh? The same place? Yeah, the same place. Okay. Eh? Like um, the people are close to the uh, to the forest, they end the water projects, but they were small scale. Mm -hmm. They were not able to to get uh, in a large area. Mm -hmm. So again, the missionaries sat down together with the community, mm -hmm. and uh, even the community said, "This is our need." Mm -hmm. And so, how can we work together? Okay. And there was the initiative from our first missionaries. It will be a, a, a collaboration between the missionaries and the community. Shiringi kwa shiringi. You give fifty, we give fifty and then we get the water okay. uh, yeah, from a bigger source that can cover a, a wide area. Mm -hmm. And so in that way, the struggle which the people end, uh, they, they were able to be catered to, uh, for, eh, okay. and the water was able to be provided. Mm -hmm. Those days, there was also a problem with HIV. Mm -hmm. And you remember the stigma, uh, yeah. the, the people would learn away from their relatives. Yeah. 
And then the, the missionaries again saw that there was a need in the same place and uh, they had in, in, an initiative to bring all these people who are suffering from HIV. Okay. And uh, because in the community there was a division between different uh, faith professions, eh, like mm -hmm. the Catholics and those from other Christian denominations, mm -hmm. all these projects would bring the different people uh, together. Thank you, Father. All yeah. these projects are, I mean, apostolate and they are key as far as the, the, the community is concerned. And I am happy that your, your brothers saw the need to involve the community before they came up with a project. We are coming back because we are now going to another short break. And when we come back, we shall be headed to our last segment. Do not go away because we want to finish well knowing what are more projects that are carried out by the missionary oblates of Mary Immacri. Do not go away. This is Captain TV, your Catholic identity, and today... The opportunity to thank the Almighty God for such an opportunity to express ourselves. Pray for us. We need your prayers. Yeah. That who we are and who God... At home, mm -hmm. we used to pray every day. If you want to pray for some, you should go and pray and then you will receive it. Then you come back. <laughs> Daraja Sakramenti ya daraja ndiyo sakramenti ambayo mwanamme mkatoliki aliitwa na Mungu hupata mamlaka na neema ya kuendeleza ndani ya kanisa utume Kristu aliyowakabithi mitume wake. Kupata daraja kama sikiza tuni yako, tuma neno sikiza likifuatwa na nambari 738102070 utume kwa 811. Captain TV, your Catholic identity, and today... The opportunity to thank the Almighty God for such an opportunity to express ourselves. Pray for us. We need your prayers. Yeah. That who we are and who God... At home, mm -hmm. we used to pray every day. If you want to pray for some, you should go and pray and then you will receive it. you come back. Welcome back, dear viewer. This is Missions of Hope with our sister Esther Moturi. And in the studio, I am with Father Cosmas and Brother Stephen, missionary oblates of Mary Immaculate. And they have been here for the last like four, five minutes telling us what they do and what they carry out. If you have a question, a comment, anything that you want them uh, to say before the end of this program, please keep them coming. Father Cosmas, you are narrating to us or you are elaborating some of the apostolate that you do as a congregation to carry out the missions of offering hope to the society. Please go on. Yeah. So I I did mention how we, we work with the people in the parish yeah. and then uh, together with the people just to work uh, to initiate uh, uh, projects mm -hmm. that... Uh, help them and they help to meet the need and the the things that have uh, been troubling them eh? mm -hmm. and i did mention uh, the schools yeah. and the, like the school we founded in Meru, the first day school in the area yeah. uh, the water project and then um, I, I mentioned about the project for the HIV mm -hmm. and the AIDS that was, was initiated. Eh? Mm -hmm. Then uh, what we try to do the areas where we are is be with the people in their struggle. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
be with them, encourage them, and then uh, pass through what they they pass together with them. Eh? Mm. And uh, an example of that I'll give in Ukraine. Mm. You know, we have been having a war there. Yeah. Our hybrids are still there throughout the war period. They remain with the people, mm -hmm. uh, accompanying the people every day. Mm -hmm. One of the hybrids there is a military chaplain, and so he, he stays with the with the soldiers there in the as the in the battlefield. He journeys with them, talks with them, encourages them, and moves with them every day. Then uh, the other countries which have uh, been having uh, struggles, like in, like in South Africa during the apartheid, mm -hmm. it was a, dif a difficult time for the South Africans that time, and uh, our, our our missionaries chose to stay with the people mm -hmm. as um, they, they were having uh, the struggle there. And uh, we and the Obrits, they walked with the people, stayed with them, they would meet with them, and when there was a need to speak to the authorities on, on behalf of the people and together with the people, our, our hybrids were, were very much ready to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in all those situations, we are there with the people. We journey with them every, every day in the, in the various uh, situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I mentioned at the start of the show that uh, our founder used to go to the to the prisoners eh? mm -hmm. because at that time there were prisoners in France, okay. and that is one of the ministries that we do even uh, even today. Mm -hmm. And in different countries, the Brits try to get in touch with the prisons which are there, and they go and offer help uh, to the prisoners. Mm -hmm. You can imagine some of them on death sentence or mm -hmm. longer sentences. Yeah. Uh, some of them they are just on allegations and all that. So our missionaries will go there, sit with them, mm -hmm. encourage them in their various uh, struggles while they are in the prison. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they help them as uh, they move out of the uh, prison so that they can reintegrate in the community. Mm -hmm. And remember these people sometimes when they are in the prison, they are wondering when they will move out, if they will be accepted back the, by the community. Mm -hmm. uh, so we go uh, stay with them in those prisons uh, and uh, then en uh, encourage them and help them to reintegrate back in the in the community okay. uh, so that has been something that uh, that we do mm -hmm. and uh, our hybrids uh, and, and do that uh, very well uh, throughout uh, the world mm -hmm. then our another ministry which is very much key to us and just like the time of our founder is a ministry with mm -hmm. the youth okay and for us we are very particular it's ministry with the youth Mm -hmm. It's not ministry to the youth. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and because we journey with them, mm -hmm. and uh, we usually try to 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 walk with them, mm -hmm. and to learn together with them how to be human, mm -hmm. how to be Christians, and how to be saints. Okay. How they can get good human values. Mm -hmm. How they can be uh, committed Christians who know their faith, mm -hmm. and be saints. People who can be heroic in their faith reach out to their fellow youths. Eh? Mm -hmm. So we try to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the different uh, countries that we are working in, different parishes, we make sure that we reach to the youth. Mm -hmm. And you know nowadays, with the different things happening to the youth, mm -hmm. a lack of employment. Yeah. And uh, then many of them sometimes no money to go to schools and all that. They just need a person who can be together with them and journey with them and encourage them. Okay. Uh, so we are there as people who can give hope to these youths and then uh, walk with them in all those places that we are. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Father Cosmas. Brother uh, Stephen. Just to add on uh, yeah. what the Father Cosmas has uh, uh, said concerning the ministries which give hope to mm -hmm. the society, mm -hmm. another ministry for the church, actually we also, as operates are in the for Dean, is the Church and Peace Integration Commission. Mm -hmm. We are also very much in the for in that in mm -hmm. our parishes. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are many things happening in the community, in yeah. our families. Yeah. So uh, as a way of integrating people to the community, those ones who, are, who feel abandoned, mm -hmm. we are also involved in that to make sure that the people of God are not left alone. Mm -hmm. We are also very much sensitive to the global warming in our communities, mm -hmm. whatever in the, in the continent at large. Mm -hmm. We are also very much involved as our Pope is very much on oh, it, Laudato Si. Yeah. We need a green environment. Mm. 
we are very sensitive as a congregation to make sure that we have uh, a good environment planting trees mm -hmm. and to avoid all these things which can bring uh, diseases and cause unnecessary uh, an environment which is not conducive for every one of us. Sure. Uh, another one is uh, about establishing, so establishing new parishes. Mm. Wherever we are as operates, we just establish a community or a parish. When it is stable, we just give it back to the diocese. Mm -hmm. So we are not there to just hold it that uh, it's our own. No. Mm -hmm. We establish a community. When it is stable, we just move. So in a way, we are giving hope to okay. the community. Mm -hmm. And in our schools, in our parishes, we have different programs that reaches out to the needy. Mm -hmm. uh, in our parishes, we have uh, programs of uh, helping the kids who are very poorer mm -hmm. to uh, access education. So in a way, we reach to the community and the most abandoned and give them hope in many ways. Okay. Thank you. Somebody is watching. And uh, first of all, there is Mike Mutangwa. Congratulations, my former classmate, Brother Stephen Makori Mose. Wow. <laughs> he Thank has you. greeted you. And then uh, we have Benjamin M. Mokor. What is the place of Mary in your congregation? You will come to answer that. Okay. What is the place of Mary in your congregation? Maybe before you answer that, because yes. time is not on our side, and you have to answer that. What uh, is one required to have, Brother Stephen? Yes. Maybe somebody has watched and has admired your way of life. He would wish to join your congregation. What are the academic requirements or any other requirement for one to join your congregation? So among the many requirements for one to join us as missionary operator of Mary Immaculate, he has to be a young man mm -hmm. who has got a deep desire to follow Christ radically. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he has to be of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. He has to be baptized, as obvious, confirmed, mm -hmm. and he has to have a very good intellectual uh, background. Yeah. Uh, normally for us, we have a, a minimum of C plus okay. in, for the Kenyan context. Mm. Yes. Okay. And if there is one who is interested to join us, mm -hmm. please feel most welcomed. Okay. Yes. Thank you. There is so Gideon, so Gideon. Hello, Father Cosmas. How are you? And our deacon from St. Eugene. Thanks. We miss you, Father. Welcome again. <laughs> and then there is ben Benedict Bunny. Well done, Father Cosmas. Following from Lesotho. I think it's Sister Benedict. Yeah. Yeah, she's following from Lesotho. Uh, Father Cosmas. What is the place of Mary in your congregation? I think he read my mind. I was to, I, I was to ask that question. Uh, what is the place of Mary in your congregation? Yeah, so in our congregation, we look at Mary as our mother mm. and as our model. Mm -hmm. So she, she is the mother of the church. She is the mother of Christ. Mm -hmm. And for us as Obrits, we consider her as our mother. Mm -hmm. And as our mother, we seek her intercession. We seek her help mm -hmm. as we go out to carry out our, our ministries and uh, as we live out our vocations. Eh? Mm -hmm. So that's how we see her as, um, uh, as, mm -hmm. as our mother. Mm -hmm. And then we see her as our model. Mm -hmm. So we look at the virtues of Mary. Mm -hmm. A total yes to the Lord, mm -hmm. a total dedication to the to the mission set before her, mm -hmm. a perseverance despite the difficulties that she underwent. Mm -hmm. So all those virtues we have, we look at them, and then uh, they give us the the, the 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 courage to live our vocations and to reach out to to the people. Mm -hmm. And we also consider her as the patroness of our congregation. Eh? Mm -hmm. So she is the patroness of our congregation, mm -hmm. and for us as obreads. All the places that we go, we try and uh, instill the devotion to Mother Mary mm -hmm. uh, to to the people we we work for and we work with. Mm -hmm. uh, like in the in the parish, I'm working in a parish in Meru, mm -hmm. and uh, during the month of uh, uh, the May and then October, yeah. we usually open the the month with a procession, mm -hmm. having the statue of Our Lady, uh, reciting the rosary, having the Marian chants, mm -hmm. and then a mass, and mm -hmm. then conclude the same month with the same. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. than encourage the Christians throughout the month mm -hmm. to do the same. Mm -hmm. So we try and uh, instill the same devotion that we have to our Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. The same uh, Benjamin M. Mokor, he's saying, congratulations, OMIs, the experts of difficult missions. <laughs> Brother Stephen, yes. there is one person who was saying the, the, the place of Mary is like, there is no difference between the, the, the place of Mary and the donkey that carried Jesus to Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the donkey served the purpose so during the triumphant entry yes. to Jerusalem. Mary is the same. She was just there to carry Jesus, to bring him as a, the, the savior to the world. Yeah. What can you tell that kind of a person? Who is Mary? Because some people will make, uh, they, they, they have a big deal as far as Mary and the Catholic Church is concerned. And that's why somebody can comfortably say that that was the purpose she was having, like that donkey. No, you know, people, they have got the different interpretations and understanding of Mother Mary in the mm. church. Yeah. But when we just sit down and look at Mother Mary, we remember very well uh, Mother Mary accompanied the child Jesus to the temple. Yeah. And there are many occasions Mother Mary was uh, with, the, with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then even when Jesus got uh, remained in the temple there, mm -hmm. she went back to look for Jesus. Yeah. And then uh, more vividly during the crucifixion, you remember the disciples ran. Yeah. The only one who had courage to go and the God there is who? Mm -hmm. Mother Mary. Yeah. She was with, the, uh, with Jesus there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jesus told the disciple, John, okay, look, this is your mother. Mm -hmm. Go with her. Mm -hmm. Now, then, since then, Mother Mary becomes an icon to us. Yeah. Always, in every mission we go, Mother Mary is with us. Yeah. So our uh, prayers and our intercessions through her, we are very sure that they just go directly to God. Mm -hmm. Now, she becomes the model of our mission because she mm -hmm. gives us that courage. Mm -hmm. However difficult it is, always she's there with us. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can use her like the way, uh, the analogy of the donkey. Mm -hmm. She perseveres, <laughs> yeah. the donkey perseveres in all of these situations. <laughs> yeah. Mother Mary never gave up yeah. to Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Towards the very end, mm. she's always there. Okay. And that's why she becomes our model. Thank you so much. <laughs> the last question, I hope. What if a person didn't get that C+, plus, but he has done a certain course and he is ready or he has a desire to become a priest? Is it easy to join your congregation? Uh, first of all, to, to join an uh, operate congregation, mm -hmm. we discern with the one who is aspiring to join us. Mm -hmm. And as I indicated earlier, the mm -hmm. minimum grade to join us is a C plus mm -hmm. uh, for the Kenyan context. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if he does not make the threshold, mm -hmm. we encourage the aspirant, he has a specific grade to do or to increase his marks. Yeah either to do a diploma course or a degree course. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you know, it's a discernment. We design with the aspirant. And then he is able or he will be admitted to join us and join with us. Okay, I think yes. we can we can leave the, the person uh, communicating with you uh, even at, after the end of this program. Maybe now give us the number that uh, the person should call, those who are interested to know more about the missionary oblates or to know to want to join you, maybe shout out the number. Yes, we have uh, the vocations director phone number. It's 0791 I repeat. Yes, repeat. 0791 <laughs> And also, we have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, our viewers can, uh, can follow us on Facebook page and then also reach us on the Facebook Messenger. Mm -hmm. Missionary Obreads of uh, Mary Margaret, mm -hmm. uh, Kenya Vocations. Okay. So they can uh, reach us there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, brothers, for coming. Maybe your last word and closing remark, Brother Stephen. Uh, my, my last uh, closing remarks is uh, we encourage young men who have a strong desire to follow Christ as religious men. Feel free to contact any one of us.
particularly to the mission of Oblate of Maculate, mm -hmm. the number you have been given with Father Cosmas, mm -hmm. once you contact him, uh, you will just contact me direct. Okay. In other words, I'm in the vocation's office, so mm -hmm. I will be able to respond to you and journey with you. Okay. So feel most welcomed and don't feel abandoned. Mm -hmm. We are with you in life, in every situation you are. Thank, Thank you. you, sister. Thank you so much, Brother Stephen. Father Cosmas, your last uh, remark. And also, there are those people who watch us, like there are old people who watch us. They are sick. Maybe after your last comment, uh, pray for them and give us blessings as we end the program, please. <laughs> yeah, my gratitude to our viewers uh, for being with us uh, during this time of uh, the show. And uh, I also want to tell all of them that uh, we are all missionaries. We have all been baptized. We have all been called by Christ uh, to follow him faithfully. Mm -hmm. And not only to follow him, also to invite others uh, to follow him. And uh, uh, to be in good witnesses, uh, just by the way we live uh, our lives and by the words that we speak. Uh, so let us conti all continue living out our baptismal call. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, so you pray and... Uh... Give us Baraka. <laughs> yeah, okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this time of the show that we have earned. We thank you for the gift of a, a Capuchin a TV, the gift that it is to the church in Kenya and to the church in the whole world. And we pray that you will continue blessing a Capuchin TV and all the staff in their professional life and in their private lives. We also thank you for our viewers and we pray that you will bless each of them. They are all having uh, and facing different situations. They are all having different uh, plans. May you bless their plans, their visions for life and the situations that they are in, especially those who are in difficult situations. May you reach out to them, may you help them out. And I also pray that you will continue blessing us and all, and all our viewers for the rest of the day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Stephen and Father Cosmas, a missionary oblate of Mary Margaret for having time to come and be with us for one hour talking about yourselves and what you do in your quest to serve the society. Thank you to dear viewer Asante Kututizama and uh, we continue asking you to continue watching Captain TV for more enlightenment about our faith and more about our country and about what we do in this world and until uh, next Tuesday I pray that you will be safe Dio tuonane tuonge mengi zaidi until then may the good Lord bless you it has been I sister Esther Moturi and in the studio I was with Father Cosmos and brother Stephen Missions of Hope God bless you Uh, this is Captain TV, your Catholic identity, and today... The opportunity to thank the Almighty God for such an opportunity to express ourselves. Pray for us, we need your prayers, yeah. that who we are and who God... At home, mm -hmm. we used to pray every day. If you want to pray for Sam, you should go and pray and then you will receive and then you will come back.
Este mes quiero contarles una historia que es un reflejo de la Iglesia de hoy. Es la historia de un testimonio de fe poco conocido. Visitando un campo de refugiados en Lesbo, un hombre me dijo, Padre, yo soy musulmán. Mi mujer era cristiana. Llegaron los terroristas a nuestro país, nos miraron y nos preguntaron nuestra religión. Vieron a mi mujer con el crucifijo y le dijeron que lo tirara al suelo. Ella no lo hizo y la degollaron delante de mí. Histórico. Y sé que él no tenía rencor. Se centraba en el ejemplo de amor de su mujer. Un amor a Cristo que la llevó a aceptar y ser leal hasta la muerte. Hermanos, hermanas, siempre habrá mártires entre nosotros. Es la señal de que vamos por el camino correcto. Una persona que sabe me decía que hay más mártires hoy que al inicio del cristianismo. El coraje de los mártires, el testimonio de los mártires es una bendición para todos. Oremos para que quienes en diversas partes del mundo arriesgan su vida por el Evangelio, contagen a la Iglesia su valentía, su impulso misionero. Y abiertos a la gracia del martirio. You are watching Capuchin TV. For any complaints, comments, or compliments on our programming, you can either write to us on info at capuchintv.co.ke or you can call us directly on 0717-424-866. Your complaint shall be addressed within seven days. Remember, to keep a copy of your communication with us. Keep watching Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels guide us. Kwa huzuni na kukubali mapenzi ya Mungu kwamba kifo kimetangazwa cha Padre James Otaga kutoka Jimbo Katoliki la Bungoma. Alikuwa babu paroko wa parokia St. Joseph Butula na kabla ya hapo alihudumu kama baba paroko wa Kisoko kwa miaka 16. Ibada ya wafu itafanyika Jumanne tarehe 5 kuanzia saa mchana kutoka katedrali ya Jimbo la Bungoma. Misa ya wafu itafanyika mnamo Jumatano tarehe 6 kuanzia saa tatu asubuhi kutoka katedrali lilo hilo ikiongozwa na askofu Makadima wa Jimbo Katoliki la Bungoma Ibada hii itakufikia moja kwa moja hapa Capuchin TV kitambulisho chako Katoliki Raha ya milele umpe Padre James Otaga e bwana na mwanga wa milele umwangazie apumzike kwa amani Amina
Kwa resma ni kipindi cha siku 40 kinachoanza na Jumatano ya majivu na kukamilika Alhamisi kuu. Kwenye kipindi hiki, Kanisa Katoliki lina nguzo nne zinazopewa kipaumbele katika maisha ya waumini ambayo ni kusali, kufanya kitubio, kufunga au kujinyima na kuboresha ukarimu. Kama njia moja ya kuboresha mafunzo zaidi kuhusu kipindi hiki, Baraza la Maaskofu Katoliki hapa nchini hutoa mwongozo maalum kila mwaka ambao una mada tofauti tofauti. Mwaka huu, ujumbe mkuu kwa kampeni ya Kwaresma ni uadilifu kwa taifa lenye haki. Mada hii hugawanywa katika wiki tano na kila wiki ina tafakari yake. Ili kufahamisha zaidi kuhusu mada kuu ya mwongozo na kampeni ya Kwaresma, runinga ya Kapuchin inakuletea uchambuzi wa mada hiyo kila wiki kwenye makala ya dhamana ya haki na Arbe Bonaya. Ni hapa tu kwenye runinga ya Kapuchin. Yo, 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 what's up my guys? Nye Jenny was say, the wait is finally over. Yeah, and Capuchin TV brings you exciting news for the youth this year 2024 with a youth program called Form Ni Faith. <laughs> In this particular program, we will be bringing you Bible trivias. We have discussions. We have talent show for those ones who love to showcase their talents, like singing. I do what I can, what I can, what I can for my people. people in Modeling, oral narratives, spoken words. Hey, stop talking while well, I'm talking. Not that I could express, at least need to stress, even if I can smile. It's only for a while. Yesu anakudai. That's why he accepted to die on the cross. To remove your die. Lemma and to give you a new die. Rection. Catches on every Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. Only at Capuchin TV. You can also get the repeaters every Wednesday from 7 p.m. Again, only on Capuchin TV. And remember, if you would love us to come and cover your event, you can contact us on 0717-424-866. Form new faith. faith with your favorite host, Maureen Kimani. And I, Maggie Maina. Come, come all, all to, to enjoy in Christ. Christ. Tired of dead end jobs? Feeling stuck without a career path? It is time to take control of your future. St. Kizito Vocational Training Institute, your one stop destination for technical courses since 1994, has got a solution for you. And the aim of the school was to take care of the, of the young people from the marginalized areas of, uh, of Nairobi. Who, are, who had finished school or they had dropped out of school and they did not have, the, their parents didn't have uh, maybe money to take them to university and other, and other, 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 other colleges. A number of them also were out of school, dropped out of school because of uh, effects of drugs. So to help them not to, to, to engage in, in, in other other form of form of uh, things that are not useful to their life, like maybe criminality and all these things. Owned by the Catholic Archdiocese of Nairobi, we have bagged 30 years of empowering unemployed youth from marginalized communities, churning out thousands job creators to the market. We have uh, a number of uh, number of courses: electrical, electronics, 
motor vehicle mechanics, plumbing and metal work, carpentry and cabinet making, catering, hair and beauty, and computer. We also offer short courses, defensive uh, driving, programmable logical controls, that is auto automations, and solar. Reap maximum benefits from our spacious departments, fully fledged with state-of-the-art tools for practical learning. Our school has been uh, involved mostly in what we call the dual training. Dual training is what people are calling the cabinet-based education. We, we, st we, we started this way back in 1994, so we have been following this model of uh, dual training, where students study in school and they go to the industry. So it's like they alternate industry and school. So this is what has made our school to excel because most of the students who have follow, followed this model, especially the ladies, they have uh, really success, uh, succeeded very well. Maybe within six months, someone is able to finish the course and, uh, and, and start, start working. So we are encouraging more young people to join, these, to join our courses. Whether you dropped out of school at any level or looking to upgrade your skills, St. Kizital Vocational Training Institute has got a course for you. Our requirements, we accept students from all levels of education. Those who have finished class 8, they have a place in our school. Those who have dropped high school, they have a place in our school. And those who have finished high school and they want to pursue their careers, in technical courses, we have a place for, for them. You know, he, he's from Sudan, mm -hmm. and I, from southern Sudan, and I think he has not reached the level of the Kenya, 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 Kenya education, but he has a, he, he's here studying, you know. And that's what we were saying, we have also this program of the dual training, where students study in school and they go to the, to the industry. So when you go to the industry, you are, you are more exposed and you discover your potential. So the school is very open, it's very open for anybody who wants to study, we, we accommodate them. From automotive engineering to culinary arts and other technical courses, there is something for everyone at St. Kizito VTI. I, the reason why I chose carpentry is because there's not a lot of people who do carpentry, especially for the guys. Mm -hmm. And it actually has a, a huge market. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I, first I was inspired to come to the interior design. So, Through? Interior design. So, interior Italian, design. Italian design, the company. It's interior. Interior design. Interior design. Uh, design. Yeah. It is also related to company. It's almost the same field. So, I decided to just do it wholly mm -hmm. because that is also a ground. And the best part low fees for quality training. It is never too late to pursue your dreams. Since you want to demonstrate, Onesha. We do exams, NITA exams, and uh, as you know, NITA, anybody can can book exams and do the NITA exams. And also we have uh, the NEC, Kenya National Examination Council exams. So those who have uh, finished high school and maybe they, they want to, to start a journey in technical education, they have a place in our, they have a place in our, in our school. Give yourself the chance to rebuild your career path with ease. Enroll in a course of your choice today. Visit our headquarters nestled along Mihoko Road in Gidurai, Kimbo, Nairobi County. So we have two branches. The main branch is here in Gidurai, Kimbo. And we have a branch in Roisambu, TRM Drive, opposite, uh, behind the Jewel Complex. For inquiries, call our main campus on 724 238716 or our Roy Sambu branch on 0724253547 or email info at stkizito.ac.ke. You can also visit our website at www.stkizito.com. So we welcome all of you to St. Kizito. 
I promise you that many have passed through this education and they are, they are working, they are enjoying and they don't regret. St. Kizito Vocational Training Institute, where you discover how to love work. Welcome to a haven of tranquility, the Ukweli Pastoral and Development Center, nestled in the heart of the breathtaking Kisumu countryside. Ukweli Pastoral Center is owned by the Archdiocese of Kisumu and is run by the Franciscan Sisters of St. Anne, Luak. It's located along Kisumu Kakamega Road, about 10 kilometers from town. Discover the perfect setting for all your events. Ukweli Pastoral and Development Center in Kisumudala is your magical destination. We offer different services like wedding receptions, we offer um, uh, workshop facilities, we offer seminars, we offer also retreats and uh, recollections. A place is quite serene, beautiful environment, far from the town, noises. Our accommodations are a blend of elegance and comfort including 12 ensuite pentagon-shaped cottages, reflecting the charm of a traditional African homestead. Just come, we give you a cottage, you feel like that African setup. In our dining hall also, what is unique about Ukweli is that we offer very African foods. We have uji, we have potatoes, yeah, fish. <laughs> and even the kind of meals we offer, very African, very healthy meals of the garden, we don't really provide uh, meat that are chemically saturated. Marvel at stunning views in all directions from the vibrant Kisumu business district along the shores of Lake Victoria to the awe-inspiring Nandi escarpments stretching to the horizons. What is unique about Ukweli is that it is far from town, from the noise of town. It's very serene and uh, we have sisters working there. And it's a, a Christian organization where all, all and sundry are welcome to Ukweli Pastoral Center. Experience seamless connectivity with free internet and advanced audiovisual technologies available in all our meeting rooms. For gate space constraints, our expansive, beautifully manicured gardens and an extensive secured parking area guarantees a hassle-free experience for your guests. Concerned about costs? Our rates include bed and breakfast, full board and half board packages at amazingly pocket-friendly rates. If you choose to come to Ukweli Paso Center, it's very peaceful and we, our rates also are very affordable. We have a full board, half board, and you can also just come for meals at a very affordable rate. Step into the warmth of our hospitality, where our friendly, professional, and indomitable team is ready to make your stay exceptional. To experience the cool environment of Kisumu, come to Ukweli Paso Center, you'll be welcomed from the, right from the gate to the reception, to the dining, to the rooms. Yeah, we are very much welcoming people. We welcome uh, people from all walks of life, the children, the PMC, we welcome the youth, we welcome different groups, we welcome associations, we welcome uh, choirs, we welcome men, we welcome even uh, non-Catholics, as long as they have something which can you know, promote and develop human person, human development. We offer those services to Ukweli. So we welcome everyone to come and see for themselves the beauty and the serene environment of Ukweli Pastoral Development Center. We are located near Kiboso Market of Kisumu Kakamega Highway in Kisumu. It's not enough to say, just come and see. Like Jesus, like Philip told Bartholomew, 
he can something good come from uh, from uh, from Nazareth. I also say a lot of good things can come from Kelly Pastoral Centre. Just come and see for yourself. For inquiries, call us at telephone number zero one one two eight one two eight seven eight or zero seven three eight one five eight two one one. And our email is ukweli pastoral center at gmail.com or info at ukweli gardens.co.ke. Ukweli Pastoral and Development Center Kisumu, your key to spiritual knowledge, reflection, and empowerment. Dr. Rudy Tena. Rudy. It's a very good place where you enjoyed, we have enjoyed our stay, and we shall come again. Karibu ni sana. Thank you. Thank you for choosing Ukweli. Thank you. Thank you. Waroko Utebi Uru Ukweli Pastoral Center, Mrune Giwangu, Kimo Mamit, Punjo Makare, Eluasi Maber, Kabisa Marili, Mugmar Punjo, Waroko Ute, Machigni Uru. Come one, come all. Karibuni ukweli, machegni ukweli dala. Kisumu city. <laughs> Welcome home, Warwaki dala.